watching Beyond Markets. Uh, Justice Minister Jeff Khadebe has called for the Farlem Commission's rules on paying for dead miners' families to attend the inquiry to be amended. This after the department said on Saturday it would no longer fund the attendance at the Commission's hearing in Rustenburg of the families of 34 miners killed in a police shooting at Marikana on August 16th. Now joining us to provide more clarity is Commission spokesperson uh, Kevin Malunga. Kevin, give us a uh, clarity uh, what is the factual position now um, is the Department of Justice going to continue the funding of the families of the victims of the people killed at Marikana yes that's correct um, essentially the minister basically uh, you know as the final authority in this in this matter actually you know literally overruled everything else that had been said in this regard and 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 you know decided that uh, there must be an amendment to the regulation uh, of the commission to 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 allow for uh, to to allow for support to families who want to because you will note that the statement that came out over the weekend was to the effect that there is no legal basis to do this which creates problems even from an accountability standpoint from a, a, a you know PFMA and and, and other sort of uh, legislation that, that 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 deals with how you spend public money. Now, so Kevin, now, yes. Kevin, let me let me come in there. These amendments that the minister is talking about, how soon will they be drafted? And in the interim, where, where there's no legal uh, requirement for these families to be financially assisted, what happens in the interim? Do you give them cash in hand? Does the money go to the lawyers? And how much money are we talking about? There is no interim because the, 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 the amendments were drafted uh, this morning. It's literally uh, you know, a, 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 an additional you know, few lines, basically, to, to, to the law to say that you can uh, 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 you know, provide for families who are affected by this thing to, to, to participate. Because remember, the regulations only allow for the witnesses to be... To, to be supported and, and granted a witness fee, so we are ready, up, good to good to go because the regulations were were drafted and, and, and finalised by close of business today for submission to the presidency. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, Kevin. Unfortunately, we've run out of time. We've got to leave it there for now. Uh, we lost some time there when the line dropped earlier. That was Kevin Malunga. He's the spokesman for the Farlem Commission into the killings um, of those miners in Marikana on August uh, 16th. To Nigeria now. Uh, senior Nigeria officials of the Nigerian state of Bayelsa are promoting to other African countries, particularly South Africa, investment partnerships opportunities focused on the development of the state. To tell us more, I'm joined in the studio by Patmo Iyabi, who is the Commissioner in the Ministry of Finance uh, in Bayalsa. Sorry for that uh, mistake in the pronunciation. Thank you so much for joining us. I understand that you've been meeting uh, both government and private sector uh, individuals in South Africa um, over the last few days, um, trying to encourage, of course, um, investors to come to, 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 to your particular area in Nigeria. Take us through what your message to, to them was? Uh, when we came to South Africa, it was explained to the South African public and the, and the business community, uh, the vision of our leader, the governor of Bielsa State, His Excellency Henry Sereki Dixon. Uh, the vision is targeted at uh, creating um, a base for oil and gas, and also um, hubs for transportation, as shipping and, and aviation in Bielsa State. In addition to that, we also want to focus on agriculture. Our mission was to tell them that we are open for business and that they can never go wrong doing business in Nigeria through Bielsa State. Now, what has been the reception um, to your message? What has the South African uh, investors that you've met um, uh, you know, said? Are they keen? Have they expressed interest? Um, and, and who, tell us, who have you been meeting? Uh, we met quite a few companies, uh, the IDC, DBSA, uh, Liberty Group, Legacy Group, and many other, other, other companies. Uh, I believe that in 10 days' time, uh, DBSA and IDC will come to Bielsa State. Uh, so also is Musa Capital, 
Um, so they're going to be coming to your country to, to, to see come what, and see what for is, themselves. Exactly. Okay, that's yeah. interesting. Now, particularly the DBSA and the IDC, we know, is particularly interested in infrastructure spend. And you were speaking about some of the um, infrastructure that you want to lay out. Now, we know that the, um, you know, you have one of the largest crude and natural gas uh, deposits in Nigeria, um, but the state remains poverty stricken, and there's very little development. What has been the reason for the fact that you're so resource rich, but your infrastructure and your population of that state remain so poor? Uh, the reason is quite basic, and that is that past governments have not done well in, in funding infrastructure development in the state. Mm -hmm. What the new gov government is doing now is to ensure that we take the state forward in developing proper infrastructure to support the activities we, we want to engage ourselves in in, mm -hmm. in, in, in years to come. We see South African companies are having the competence mm -hmm. to do that, for, do that for us. We need quality infrastructure. Infrastructure can last the test of time. And that is why you came to South Africa. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, in, in terms of saying that you need quality infrastructure, obviously um, it's quite um, important to build links, particularly with companies, can, uh, companies that can deliver the goods. Um, but what are the kind of potential for South African um, uh, businesses to team up with their Nigerian counterparts to deliver some of the, the, the you know, the, the, the infrastructure that you require, amongst other things, in, in Nigeria? The potential is quite great. In fact, by us alone, a set of companies designed to work with South African companies. Mm -hmm. um, the truth of the matter is that as a growing state, uh, earnings are quite uh, reasonable. Uh, you just mentioned that we provide 30% of the uh, oil revenue to the federal government, and we get a share of that. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to use part of that to support the, the business structures that work with us, mm -hmm. obviously. And uh, that will go a long way in ensuring that uh, default scenarios will not happen mm -hmm. if we do business with South African companies. But now, one of the concerns about uh, doing business in a place like Nigeria is, of course, security around things like financial institutions, regulations, the regulatory framework, and so on. Um, what assurances can you give um, in Investors um, um, that you know the regulatory framework in the state um, is uh, of such a nature that investments will in fact be protected, properties will be protected. Uh, government has opened up in, uh, investment to, the, to outside uh, companies uh, many years back. Uh, the, the banking reforms that happened in uh, 2008, 2009 has ensured that the, the level of uh, security for funds has increased uh, tremendously uh, in terms of. Uh, people losing money in the Nigerian market, uh, that's uh, something that will not happen, uh, mm. I, I believe, in, in, in the near future. Uh, there's a lot of protection for, for investments now, right now. Mr. Yabi, thank you so much. Unfortunately, we've run out mm. of time, but uh, lots of good luck with the initiative. I'm sure South African companies will take up the opportunity. Thank you so much for coming into our studio. That was Pat Mo Iyabi, who is the Commissioner in the Ministry of Finance in Bialsa. Well, that's it for Beyond Markets. Watch Political Exchange this evening when we talk BRICS Development Bank. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you.